Oh, I got a rush. Oh, I got a rush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that God arise around the world, making disciples of all nations. Yeah, of Jesus Christ. And she starts with God's Word, the Bible. This is the annual report of Bible League Canada of 2022. The living Word of God transformed people from the inside out. Because of your support, uh, my support as well, this year, this past year, millions of people received scriptures and discipleship training through starting new churches, children's programs, adult literacy classes, yeah, reading, writing, uh, prison ministry, and more. Each copy of God's Word is diligently tracked, connecting you, the Canadian donor champion, with local champions in almost 50... Oh, yeah, got a rush. Oh, yeah, got a rush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like God arise around the world, making disciples of all nations. Yeah, of Jesus Christ. And she starts with God's Word, the Bible. This is the annual report of Bible League Canada of 2022. The living Word of God transformed people from the inside out. Because of your support, uh, my support as well, this year, this past year, millions of people received scriptures and discipleship training through starting new churches, children's programs, adults, adult literacy classes, yeah, reading, writing, uh, prison ministry, and more. Each copy of God's Word is diligently tracked, connecting you, the Canadian donor champion, with local champions in almost 50, with local champions in almost 50 countries. That's a lot. To see maximum impact and multiplying transformation. And one heart transformed by the gospel message goes out and shares it with another child out or community. <laughs> Alright, let's go. What's happening in Africa? I'm going, I'm going too. Well, Psalm 37, verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. He will do this. A place to belong. In the name of Jesus, Peter, Kenyoya eagle it reaches out to his community. The training clipping he has feet have had a huge impact. Currently he is running to very successful outlet street clan hunters in Kenya, as well as pastor hunters. Feeding souls and minds all work together. Yeah. Four years ago, Pastor Kenyoya was the leader of the small worship worship group with just three his training. He became a volunteer teacher for the adult literacy program. The Bible, the Bible-based lessons soon had students asking questions about Jesus, and he led to his small church gatherings. Church is growing today. About almost 100 men, women, and children are going to gather for wor wor worship. <laughs> the sense of belonging and commitment is having all our access of their community. Quickly as the literacy centers grow to. Some of the classes have started table banking fire goats. Go, 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 goats. Breathe through. They make the race that goes to sell profit and their share amongst the members. This exercise increases the level of trust and commitment of theirs at the center. Since they have invested their own money. I see a good return. They learn banking, budgeting, saving, and tithing. All right, Africa. Government's helping out too. <laughs> Transformation, adult ministry in Canada. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to hear and approve what God's will is. It's good. It's good. Good, <laughs> pleasing, and perfect will. Oh, really? Romans 12, too. A living faith testimony. I'm a young adult in Canada. There we go. Okay, this is her testimony. Oh, yeah. All right. So, through people who support Bible League Canada, this is what this uh, lady's testimony is about. So, how uh, we supported her. So, she said she grew up in a secular home, but her parents sometimes brought her to church. And, um... Yeah, sometimes it even sent her to Bible camp. And she knew the story how Jesus lived. And she knew the story how Jesus lived and died. 
but I uh, didn't know what having a personal savior really meant. And she did not see, uh, okay, she did not see others living their faith outside of Sunday service. So, um, yeah. So life at home was good until her parents began fighting frequently. Immigration posed many challenges for them. And at one point, her father had to return to China, leaving her mother and her alone. When her parents divorced, she was confused and angry at God. How can this be? Why? Her family situation was too much to grapple. So she busied herself with school. But she was hungry to learn about how people could be, could have a loving, healthy relationship and live it out well. She thought about it a lot and came to the conclusions. Uh, using her own thinking, conclusions. Uh, using her own thinking. So um, through adolescence, she named herself as an atheist, devoting herself to studies and idolizing the power of the rational mind. But rather than stri- arriving at a peaceful conclusion... Mm-hmm. It became increasingly worse. Thankfully, God pursued her, and even when she rejected him. When she started in university, she was invited to a church on campus. Therefore, there, she felt a wonderful sense of joy and belonging. She met girls who would become members of her first small group, including Rebecca, who would become her mentor. We all, she all, she meets, meets weekly, you know, studying scripture, serving, worshiping. Here. She witnessed a body of believers living their faith. She was a skeptic and now a believer, being renewed day by day in the knowledge of Christ and empowered by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, let God arise. Oh yeah. <laughs> Transformation, adult ministry in Canada. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to hear and approve what God's will is. It's good. It's good. Good. <laughs> Pleasing and perfect will. Oh, really? Romans 12, too. A living faith testimony. I'm a young adult in Canada. Here we go. Okay, this is her testimony. Oh, yeah. All right. So, through people who support Bible Canada. This is what this uh, lady's testimony is about. So, how uh, we supported her. So, she said she grew up in a secular home, but her parents sometimes brought her to church. And, um, yeah, sometimes it even sent her to Bible camp. And she knew the story how Jesus... And she knew the story how Jesus lived and died, but uh, didn't know what having a personal Savior really meant. And she did not see, uh, okay, she did not see others living their faith outside of Sunday service. So, um, yeah, so life at home was good until her parents began fighting frequently. Immigration posed many challenges for them. And at one point, her father had to return to China, leaving her mother and her alone. When her parents divorced, she was confused and angry at God, how can this be? Why? Her family situation was too much to grapple. So she busied herself with school, but she was hungry to learn about how people could be could have a loving, healthy relationship and live it out well. She thought about it a lot and came to the conclusion, conclusions uh, using her own thinking. So um, through adolescence, she named herself as an atheist, devoting herself to studies. And idolizing the power of the rational mind. But rather than stri- arriving at a peaceful conclusion, mm-hmm, it became increasingly worse. Thankfully, God pursued her. And even when she rejected him, when she started in university, she was invited to a church on campus. Therefore, there, she felt a wonderful sense of joy and belonging. She met girls who would become members of her first small group, including Rebecca would become her mentor. We all, she all, she meets, meets weekly, you know, studying scripture, serving, worshiping. Here, she witnessed a body of believers living their faith. She was a skeptic and now a believer, being renewed day by day in the knowledge of Christ and empowered by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. 
Oh yeah, they got a ride. Yeah. Oh yeah. The rise. <laughs> got a rise. <laughs> All right. So next story in my uh, Bible League Canada in summer of 2022 uh, report. So acceptance. Let's, let's go to the Ukraine here. All right. So story is called Now I Know. <laughs> now you'll know. Let's see what's better. So Bible League supporters provided Bibles for Ukrainian refugees. Bible in the language of their heart. So 12, that's right, 12 Ukrainian refugees were sheltered at the Ministry Center in Moldova. Under. One of them, Alicia, Alyssa, a recent graduate from the University of Odessa, had great plans for a career and a future. And with her boyfriend, and with her boyfriend... Ivan, we're in Ukraine. The couple knew of God, but had no interest to learn anymore. They were happy just living their own lives. Mm -hmm. Well, when war broke out, of course, Ivan knew it would be, you know, be safest for Adelacia to leave Ukraine, or him and Elias leave Ukraine, until they, all the fighting left their city, and, well, you know what happened next, well... Alicia desperately, desperately wanted to stay, but uh, she agreed to go, believing she would be returning soon. When Alicia arrived at the ministry center, she feared, and they had they had begun. Well, she feared that they had begun to, uh, to to bring her to some religious sect, as the building looked like a church. However, no one forced her to pray or attend services, and she saw the ministry workers were simply serving the needs of the refugees. She was so touched when the speaking workers she was so touched when the speaking workers apologized that they didn't well they didn't uh, know the Ukrainian language right so she watched as they built a shower room and installed laundry area for the refugees she listened when others were asked for prayer she smiled when they told her that God loved her their consistent love and caring caused Alicia to want to know more about God that they served. Shivan Ukrainian Bibles arrived, but this time all twelve refugees were eager to start re eager to start reading their new Bibles, of course. As the workers, along with some local believers, helped them to read and study the Bible together, they all began to consider and ponder lives. The word list he read, a new Bible caused her to repent before God. Now I know Jesus my her personal Lord and Savior. The living word of God is transforming lives. Praise the Lord. Well, three months later, Lizzie returned to Ukraine. She told Ivan everything she had experienced and learned with the word of God and that she had decided it. Move out of their apartment. Though it was, he was not happy, son changed. They continued their relationship. And at least he had faith to pray, 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 pray. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The rise. <laughs> Got a rise. <laughs> All right. So, next story in my Bible League Canada in the summer of 2022. Uh, report so acceptance. Well, let's, let's go to the Ukraine here. All right, so story is called Now I Know. <laughs> now you'll know. Let's see what's better. So, Bible League supporters provided Bibles for Ukrainian refugees, Bible in the language of their heart. So, 12 that's right, 12 Ukrainian refugees were sheltered at the ministry center in Moldova. Be under. One of them, Alicia, Alyssa, a recent graduate from the University of Odessa, had great plans for a career and a future. And with her boyfriend, and with her boyfriend, Ivan, we are in Ukraine. The couple knew of God, but had no interest to learn anymore. They were happy just living their own lives. Mm -hmm. Well, when war broke out, of course, Ivan knew it would be, you know, be safest for Adelacia to leave Ukraine or him and Elias leave Ukraine until they all the fighting left their city and well you know what happened next. Well Alicia desperately, desperately wanted to stay, but uh, she agreed to go, believing she would be returning soon. When Alicia arrived at the ministry center, she feared and they had they had begun well, she feared that they had begun to uh, 
bring her to some religious sect, as the building looked like a church. However, no one forced her to pray or attend services, and she saw the ministry workers were simply serving the needs of the refugees. She was so touched when the speaking workers apologized that they didn't. Well, they didn't uh, know the Ukrainian language, right? So she watched as they built a shower room and installed laundry area for the refugees. She listened when others were asked for prayer. She smiled when they told her that God loved her. Their consistent love and caring caused Alicia to want to know more about God that they served. A ship of Ukrainian Bibles arrived. By this time, all 12 refugees were eager to start, re eager to start reading their new Bibles, of course. As the workers, along with some local believers, helped them to read and study the Bible together, they all began to consider and ponder lies. The word list you read, a new Bible caused her to repent before God. Now I know Jesus, my her personal Lord and Savior. The living word of God is transforming lies. Praise the Lord. Well, three months later, Lizzie returned to Ukraine. She told Ivan everything she had experienced and learned with the word of God that she had decided to move out of their apartment. Though was, he was not happy, son changed. They continued their relationship. And Lizzie. Let God arise, oh yeah. Let God arise, oh yeah. <laughs> Continuing on, the 2022 Annual Report of Bible League Canada. All right. Uh, we're going to uh, look uh, what Bob uh, Beasley, Reverend Bob Beasley, has said, the Chief Minister Officer of Bible League Canada. He said, come and see um, what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind, Psalm 66.5. So this is his letter, Pastor Bob. So he says, even in a world afflicted by pandemic and conflict, God, you know, as his champions, fiercely, Continuing to serve him and others. These faith-filled men and women are committed to know Christ. Right? And make him known. Right? All over the world. Many are serving in regions of the world where it's dangerous to be known as a follower of Jesus. Driven by the same passion that drove the Apostle Paul. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. Becoming like him and his death. Woo. <laughs> Philippians 3.10. Bible League Canada receives testimonies from local champions in almost 50 countries. From the Philippines, we hear of one faithful champion who walked three days along dangerous mountain paths to reach a remote village where there was no gospel presence. Woo. To share the good news of Jesus with children there. Wow. Three-day journey. Woo. Following the arrest of one of the local champions in a country... Uh, where persecution of Christians is severe, the authorities announced that he had died in prison. Uh -oh. Heartbroken, we continued to pray for his young wife and two small children. A month later, we were still stunned to receive a photo of him alive, still behind bars, but being transferred to a much less dangerous prison. While in jail, he faithfully shares the love of Jesus with his fellow prisoners. All right. In jail, he faithfully shares the love of Jesus with his fellow prisoners. All right. Yeah, just like uh, Joseph. As pandemic restrictions lessen, ministry opportunities abound like never before. We've learned some important lessons over the past three years. In this new era about how to engage in ministry better, and our champions are going ahead full throttle. Put the pedal to the metal and I'll never get the lost. Which way will it go? Roads cross. Right. With what they have come to know and implement, the impact will be even greater moving forward. We need your help now more than ever. The words of the psalmist are coming to pass. Be still and know that I am God and be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46, 10. Amen. Let God arise, oh yeah, let God arise, oh yeah. <laughs> Continuing on, the 2022 Annual Report of Bible League Canada. All right, uh, we're going to uh, look at uh, what Bob uh, Beasley, Reverend Bob Beasley, has said, the Chief Minister Officer of Bible League Canada. He said, come and see um, what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind, Psalm 66.5. So this is his letter. Pastor Bob. So he says, even in a world afflicted by pandemic and conflict, God, you know, as his champions, fiercely continuing to serve him and others. 
These faith-filled men and women are committed to know Christ, right? And make him known, right? All over the world. Many are serving in regions of the world where it's dangerous to be known as a follower of Jesus. Driven by the same passion that drove the Apostle Paul, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the 